Um, so I think a, a lot of us have thought about chronic pain in America um, as a public health crisis. Um, and it certainly has been um, a local crisis uh, in the geographic area where I practice, San Francisco County. Um, I work with safety net patient populations um, who are affected by high rates of chronic pain, substance use disorders, um, and opioid-related risks. Uh, and the idea for our program was really born out of that crisis, trying to meet the needs of our patients in a more comprehensive way while also minimizing risk um, that is associated with uh, some of the treatments that we had been using. In San Francisco, uh, when kind of faced with data showing very high rates of opioid-related overdose affecting particularly particular communities um, that were served by Department of Public Health um, clinics, uh, leadership came together um, to design, implement, and evaluate um, an integrative pain management program. Um, and we used it. We used a quality improvement framework um, known as a PDSA cycle um, that was developed by Deming and and championed by um, Don Berwick. And, and we used um, that quality improvement framework in order to engage in continuous evaluation um, and adaptation of our program uh, to meet the needs of our patients and providers um, on the ground. And we actually also conducted a, a quasi-experimental study um, of a proportion of the patients who participated in our program um, to look at pain outcomes, quality of life outcomes, and functional status. You know, I think it's a it's a big important question that lots of people are who are struggling with who want to provide multidisciplinary or multimodal pain care um, in their uh, communities. So far, our program has been sustainable, um, and and it has been because we're we have the leadership um, and commitment from uh, folks at our local Department of Public Health who've allotted general funds uh, in order to pay for our program, and we've also used um, quality uh, improvement incentive funds that comes from the biggest. Um, managed care um, provider for Medicaid in our area. They have a quality improvement program that's aimed at improving pain care, and so we're able to use some of those funds also to continue and sustain our program. I think um, you know the challenges that I've faced um, are a lot of the same uh, that providers um, that uh, desired this clinic um, also faced. I, I think you know number one, um, you know I see patients uh, who have uh, experienced um, childhood and adult trauma, are struggling with mental health conditions, um, depression and anxiety, um, and have a chronic pain syndromes, um, often related to traumatic injuries or just degenerative disease that affect all of us as we age. And I think the biggest struggle is how do we find um, treatment modalities that will improve their function and quality of life while also minimizing risk? And how do you de deliver that to people who are dealing with housing instability and uh, social crises um, and who may have uh, you know, barriers to, to coming to appointments and engaging with treatment? Uh, and I think you know, the, the challenge related to that is how do you deliver a program um, that meets their needs, but is also efficient um, and sustainable so that we can continue doing it for, for a larger community of, of folks. Um, and I think just going on from that is also you know, dealing with um, comorbid opioid use disorder um, in our patients um, who, who are struggling with chronic pain. Uh, you know, what other options do we have for our patients um, who clearly opioids are, are too high of risk? Um, you know, what pharma, other pharma, pharmacologic agents do we have for them and what other multimodal um, uh, treatment programs do we have for them. They're not always available and, and we were trying to, to meet, those, um, meet those needs with this program.